dog and he had a, a bump <laughs> on his back back here and they took him to one vet down here because daddy was being cheap and I didn't like the people. I wasn't going to them. I said it one time. I wasn't going back down there. But anyway, they told him it was just a fatty tumor. Well, they took him back the other day because it kept getting bigger and then they biopsied it and called him down there and told him it was cancer. So he broke all down before Mama got there, and that is hard. He don't ever see him cry, but he done broke down and cried down there. Woo! So they told him all that. I said, let me tell you something. It ain't no just God says it's over. I don't care if it's a dog, a giraffe, an elephant, a person. I don't care what it is. Till God says it's over, it ain't over. Amen. And so we went on down there, and they went and did this and that, and I got, they brought the report down there, and I started reading the report. I said, this report don't say the dog got cancer. The report says he got some cells that don't look right, but it don't say that he got cancer, and I'm not believing that he does. So then he got all upset, and I said, I'm going to tell you something about doctors and all the medicine and all that. They are always going to speak doom. They are always going to speak death. Why? Because they under the God of this world and they know death and that's what they know and they always going to speak worse than it is. That way if it turns around, they're going to look like a hero. I said, but I'm not receiving it until you go down there and have some other tests done that this dog got no cancer. So they went down there and they had a, saw the other one and he looked around in there and he said, I don't see anything that tells me that he's got cancer. I'm not telling you that he don't have cancer, but I don't see anything that says that he does. So they went in, did a surgery, and cut it all out. He said, well, there's some tendrils down in there. It looked like it, it might be trying to metastasize, and I couldn't get all of it out of there, but I don't. we're going to send it off and see. So I'm going to believe in the name of Jesus that it ain't. Because it's up to him. All things that have been made, he made. And he's ruled over everything. See, because I, I, when I'm praying in, in, in the morning and praying and going out, you know all the animals and all the earth and all suffer because of us. That's right. yeah. What the Bible tells us in, in Romans 8 chapter, that they all suffer because of us. So I love animals, so I just repent. I read in the Bible where Daniel repented for all of Israel, even though he hadn't even been the one that committed the sin. He repented for all of them anyway. So I just repent for them. I ask God to have mercy on them. Ease that suffering. Take away that pain. Don't be punishing them for something I did. Because I know you can do that. That don't mean it's going to turn all of it back, but it means that God... See, when I just... I, God put love in my heart around me. When I drive down the road and I see a warning around, I, I pray God get them home safe and keep them and protect them and go and take care of them. And I come back by and they've been gone. I just believe God they went home. <laughs> now I'm trying to get that over on people. Because people are aggravating me. I'm not going to lie to you. They just aggravate me. And I can see, I'll say to myself, hey, they, they got sins. You got sins. You ought to have some sins. You ought to do what you're supposed to do. And so sometimes it's hard for me to have mercy on them. And then that Lord, he, the Lord, he'll always take me back and say, well, remember when you did this? Thing? You remember when you used to do that over there? And I kept you. That's right. I'd be like, yeah, I do remember that, Lord. Help him, help him not be so ignorant, Lord. <laughs> and so recently, the Lord, you, you know, we've been, we've been laboring in this ministry for a long time. And we've seen a whole lot of folk come and go. And a whole lot of them has been, uh, has done a lot of damage to some folks around here and to the body of Christ as a whole. But you know, the Lord started moving on me about two or three months ago to start praying for them people. Start interceding for them, start pleading the blood over them, start claiming them for the kingdom of heaven, start praying that God Amen. will remove the veil from their eyes and let them see that they antichrist and they demon possessed and they need to call out to him so that they can be saved before this world is over. Amen. Why? Because it's not his will, it is your parish, but I always should come to repentance. He don't rejoice in the death of the wicked, what the Bible said. That's my heart that rejoices in seeing people go down because I'm pride. I know not what spirit I'm on. I am. I, I love sometimes. I'm like James, uh, James and John. I want to call, I bet be the sons of thunder and call fire down on them. But that ain't Jesus' way. I'm trying to get over here to Jesus here in a minute. <laughs> so the Bible tells us that out of the fullness of the heart, the mouth speaks. Is that what it says? And so, uh, 
let's look at let's look at that from God's point of view, from God's perspective. Out of the fullness of the heart, God spoke. And the Bible tells us that He spoke everything into existence. By faith, the world were framed, is what it says in Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Turn with me, put your finger on John 1 and 1, and then turn back to Genesis 1 and 1. I know y'all been over this before, but we're going to go over it again. You know, another scripture that it says is that as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so as God thought in his heart, that's what he is. And what he thinks in his heart, he speaks. And that's who God is. What God speaks, see, what, what you speak out of your mouth is what you are. Because it's coming, it's an extension of you. It's coming out of the inside of you. When all that foul filthiness comes out of your mouth, it's because it's still in your heart. You hear me? I'm talking to myself too. It's just because you don't... Be cussing somebody, you can run them down without you no cuss work hurt. That's right. You sure can. I do it. I know. That's why I'm telling you. See, I go in these prisons and talk to these people, and I talk to them just like I'm talking to you right here, and people's eyes get big. I say, look, I'm not coming out here to put no show on. This is me. This is what you get. I struggle just like everybody else. I'm not going to come in here and put no show on and tell you that everything's just lovely and I, I've arrived and I don't fall in no sin and don't nothing ever get me no more because that's a lie. Yep. And I'm not going to set you up for a fall. I'm going to tell you, you're going to have to struggle. It's going to be some things that you're going to have to come work out in your own life. Right. And so that's, this is how we do. We come and confess our sin one to another. And we pray for one another and strengthen one another. That's not, telling, that's not saying that that person is going to be able to keep you from sinning. That person ain't going to keep you from nothing. But when you get it out sometime, then at least it'll put a little bit more on you. One, they'll be praying for you. And two, you won't see them next time and have to tell them that you still been doing what you were doing. You got to do whatever you got to do. You ain't an all-out battle to make it through this world. He that endureth to the end, the same shall be saved. And we're supposed to be good soldiers. And whatever I got to do to try to make it one more day, that's what I'm going to do. Amen. It don't matter what it is. I got to try to do it. I got to try to live like God called me to live. Amen. And sometimes it ain't easy. Mm -hmm. Sometimes if things get to getting in my mind and I'll be looking at something I shouldn't have looked at and then it'll get to letting them things and start spilling firing up in your mind and it'll go on and on and on. Sometimes you'll get a phone call from somebody that'll stir something up. I was at the house a while ago and this wasn't necessarily nothing bad but I saw Paul Bartolazzo on there and somebody was going back and forth with him about, about the, the timing of the rapture and all them kind of things. They was going back and forth and they just told him, well, everybody in the church can't be wrong. This is what the Holy Ghost has revealed to me and this and this and this and I'm fighting. Ooh, I'm going to get mad and I'm going to turn this off. See, because I want to start scripture with people and tell them how ignorant they are and say, how won't you start looking at all this over here? And yet, I just, I, I, I just said, no, I'm just going to turn it off. I'm not getting into it because they're not going to receive it. Right? They're not going to receive it, especially if I start firing at them because of what I'm going to do. I'm going to be like Peter. I'm going to take this sword and hook your ear right off. And a brother offended is not easily won. So it's best for me just not to even get into it. 